Hey everybody, I'm Rap from Rap's Garage Shop and today I want to get the tanks back on my 46 knuckle. But before I do, I want to address a few comments that the internet experts had and talk about them for a second. Since everybody on the internet is such an expert, I'll address them. You saw in the video that when I had the carburetor apart that I gave it a quick clean out and put it back on. One person suggested that I was an amateur because I used a brass float. Now, I don't know, but I put that brass float in there in 1999, and it's never given me any trouble whatsoever. I know today the big rage is to use the rubber ducky. I know that they didn't have rubber duckies around when I did this carburetor, and I don't even know that I've ever seen a rubber ducky. I saw an advertisement in the Antique Motorcycle Club of America magazine back in the day, and I called the guy up and talked to him and said that, and he said that he made excellent floats and that I would have no problem. At the time, I bought three of the floats, one for a 48 pan I restored. Then the other two, I put one in this one and I put one in another linker I rebuilt. None of these bikes ever had a problem. So I, I don't know what to say. Second comment I recently got said that I should have rebuilt the carb while it was apart. Obviously a person that's never had a linker because they're about as simple as a carb you can get open them up clean the float bowl out if the needle and seat there was nothing else in the car i did pull the emulsions tube out just for giggles and just made sure it was clear it was i didn't even need to do that and that was more than i even wanted to do but some internet experts suggested that i needed to rebuild the car that carburetor probably has a gasket from the 40s still on the float bowl i'm guessing it's probably got asbestos in it I've never had the need to pull it off because it's never leaked. So for those couple of internet experts, I don't know. If you think I missed something, leave it in the comments. But I'm pretty sure I didn't. Since it's, it's my bike and I've had it on the road since 1999, I'm pretty sure I know a little more about my bike than you do. And if I thought I needed a car job, I would have done it. Surely it makes good content. And I've got other car videos on my page. You can check those out. I have an SNS rebuild video and a CV carb video and shows you how to hot rod your CV carb. So I'm pretty checked out on rebuilding carbs and I, if I thought I needed it, I'd do it. But it did. Anyway, with that said, the one issue I did find with the carburetor is the filter needed to be opened up and checked. And when I opened it up, it was clean, but the cork gaskets had finally went away. So rather than trying to find two new cork gaskets, because it gets one on the top, one on the bottom of the filter I made them it now I just figured I would have to get two different size hole punches punch the outside then find one for the inside and punch the inside but it wound up that we have a tool at work that punches them both at the same time I didn't even know there was a such a tool that would punch them both at the same time so here's the filter housing it mounts like this to the bottom of the carb and then takes fuel in from the gas tank here and goes up into the carb here Here's the filter. There's a stem up in the top of this that the upper part of the filter goes in to align it. And then this takes a gasket on each side. Now here's that gasket that I made. And it's out of gasket material. This stuff's really good stuff. It won't give me a problem. And it just slips on like this. Then you can see I already have one up in the lid. And I made two extras for down the road. I'm sure at some point or another I'm going to need two more. And I figure I'll just make them so I have them. The way it works is you put one down in the cap. You put the filter on. Put the other one on. Then just take, drop it together. Just like that. It's a beautiful thing how simple some of the things on the antique are. Anyway, now I'm going to mount this onto the carburetor. And then I'm going to start putting the fuel tanks on. So the fuel filter goes right here, right behind the air filter backing plate. I'm going to try and get it on there without taking the air filter backing plate off. But if I can't get it wrench up in there to tighten it, then I will end up having to take it off. All right, the easy part was getting it on there. The hard part's going to be seeing if I can tighten it. First thing I'm going to do is put the left side tank on. Left side tank has the shifter gate, the shifter arm. The pet cock, of course it has a cap. It also has the crossover tube. Of 
straight now I just loosely bolt everything on next thing I have to do is hook up the crossover I just line the tube up and then I just bring it up on there again everything's loose I'm just gonna have this be finger tight lastly I have to get the fuel feed tube here's the tube here it comes off the bottom of the pet cock right there so you can see it comes off the bottom of the pet cock here goes down under in between the cylinders here it is here and that little stub right there is the fuel filter like I said everything's nice and loose and then it's just a matter of lining them up hopefully there's a little better view you can see I kind of got it started a little bit just have to get in there with my fingers and thread it on a bit more now just tighten everything up with the fuel line I have to start with the fuel filter up onto the carb and then I'll tighten that up it winds up I can't tighten that nut without taking the air filter backing plate off so I just have to remove these locking tabs then I take the 3 8 bolts out I'm sure I've got these Loctite and also I can feel it now you can see where they have Loctite all over them so there you can see what everything looks like I'll just tighten the filter up first now just make sure the filter cap is tight and it is All right, that's all tight. And the last thing you want to do is make sure the fuel line isn't touching any metal. With a vibration, it could rub a hole in it, and nothing's touch, touching any metal. Now get the air filter backing plate back on. That means plenty of Loctite on these, even though they have the metal locking tabs. Same with the other side. Now I'm just going to take a small pair of pliers and bend those tabs back over. Alright, there you have that. Fuel line's all on. Now I'm going to tighten up the crossover tube. And I already tightened it on the other side. Now that I have the bolts tightened on the tank, there's one bolt up here one bolt below the tanks and then there's one nut that goes on the studs that are on the tank that face each other now I Loctited all those next thing to do is to get the dash on in order to get the dashboard on take it down over the reset and it just drops right on like that then it just takes some screws that go in here there's one on the other side then you put this plate on, goes into the rubber piece. These take a screw also to hold them on. This takes the same screw, holds it on. Now I put the rubber divider in. Now I'm going to turn it on to see what the cat's eyes look like with the LEDs. Oh yeah, very nice. Not a whole lot of bleed over. Oh yeah, looks real good. Happy with that. This is the generator charging. This one is the oil pressure. So that's it for getting the tanks on the bike and the fuel lines hooked up and the dash on. Next video will be me getting the back end of this straightened out and that'll be getting the brake on and then all the linkages on. First I got to get it fit up, then I got to take it apart. I want to move the rim on the sprocket a little bit and then I'll put it back together for the final time. So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and come back for the next video. See ya.